Good evening, hello and welcome to this Super Saturday debate. I am Anusha Soni. Our top focus tonight, a mega scam that has been honored by an exposure done by CNN News 18. First, we told you the story here. Now, top sources within the Minority Affairs Ministry reveal a nexus that has embezzled funds to the tune of about 144 crore rupees in the last five years. Now, the scholarship initiative that was launched in the academic year 2007-2008, that's the duration, in 2016, it was revealed when the digitization process was actually started that a lot of these beneficiaries under these earlier schemes are actually frauds. There are no records or these aspirants don't exist or more importantly, sometimes the institutions do not exist. When the records were digitized, the aspirants had to apply online for the scholarship. That was the time that the scam was unearthed and several institutions were scrutinized. They were found to be involved in fraudulent activities. Minority Affairs Ministry has now recommended the matter for a CBI investigation to figure out what exactly happened. This is a scam that involves impropriety at different levels. The district nodal officers who verified the fake cases are also under the scanner. The Central Bureau of Investigation is likely to probe the nodal officers. It's also likely to conduct investigation as to how certain banks or their officers were involved into all of this. What exactly this scam is about, we tell you the different layers to the story which is emerging here on the Super Saturday debate. Well, let's first get in a sense about what the facts of the case are. When exactly did the scam happen? What is the time duration? What is the quantum of money? And what are the various levels to the story? Joining me on the broadcast is a managing editor, Anand Narsimhan, who's with us on the show. Anand, first a lowdown from you. What exactly is the scam about? What are the details that have emerged? Well, clearly it is much, much more than just irregularities as mentioned by the Honorable Minister. CNN News 18 has gleaned from sources within the Minority Ministry, Minority Affairs Ministry, that this is a huge, huge scam with respect to scholarships and the way minority rep institutions are being represented or data is being misused. The system itself is being uh, blindsided. That's what's happening uh, if we try and understand the nature of this entire scam. And it percolates right down to the last person who's there uh, stamping a particular applicant as deserving of a minority scholarship. It goes into the district nodal officer who is looking the other way or perhaps blindly signing off on whatever the institution's minority officer is sending back to him or her. And more importantly, who are these banks and bank officers and officials who are opening these accounts which are all largely furgy? Can one mobile number have more than 2,000 accounts, scholarship accounts linked to it? Can one branch have 66,000 scholarship accounts? These are questions that remain. How is it that students 68 percent dropout ratio in class 7 or 67 68 percent in class 7 8 and 9 somewhere thereabouts has gone unnoticed that they receive the annual money scholarship and then they break away institutions who don't have hostel facilities how are they claiming see the scholarship number let's say ballpark if it is 2000 rupees 3000 rupees per annum for institutions without a hostel facility balloons up to 9000 rupees per student per annum if it has got hostel amenities so these hostel amenities are being claimed how is it that there are institutions which don't even exist physically on ground but have been uh, ratified and verified by officers nodal officers and why 
why are states if they have been flagged of such corruption and such uh, workings have they not turned back and said we'll crack them down why is it that the overall officially error ratio is deemed at only about 2 to 3% when in just 1572 institutions surveyed by the ncaer nearly 53% if not more have come out have uh, have turned out to be fake 63% 830 out of 1572 right. Right. is not a small number absolutely Absolutely, Anand. And as you get us all the details, let's also take a look at what transpired on the floor of the house. It's interesting to note that Union Minister Smriti Rani had responded to a question, an unstart question, number two three seven three, which was asked by Mr. Shashi Tharoor. Now, this is what the question was. Shashi Tharoor had questioned the number of applications, pre-metric examination scheme, and what exactly there were certain irregularities that were reported. There was also a newspaper report that had highlighted this entire thing. Smith, uh, Union Minister's response was: Smriti Rani ji has said that irregularities were no. noticed in the scheme and they are now being investigated that's the response of mr shashi tharoor and this is what union minister smriti irani had pointed out that action taken to weed out irregularities and the reverification process mr tharoor in that unstart question had asked whether 11.65 lakh applications have been blocked and about 40 lakh aspirants as we've been telling you after that verification process uh there are about 40 lakh uh, uh, applicants who were denied the grant under by the minority affairs ministry but there was not really some kind of complaint that one had anticipated it because these were all fraudulent or fake accounts let's let's move on to another another slide and let's have a look at what this probe really reveals the big numbers which are emerging right now these numbers are about at the state level at a median about 53% of the institutions surveyed pan india were found fake There were numbers that were taken from different states across the country. For example, in Chhattisgarh, about 100% of them were fake. 99 out of the 128 institutes in Rajasthan were fake. These were sample sizes that were taken by the expert bodies on the recommendation of the Minority Affairs Ministry. 69% of the institutions in Assam were fake. In Karnataka, about 64%. In the state of Uttarakhand, about 60% of the institutions were found fake. In UP, about 44%, and in the state of Madhya Pradesh, about 40%. But the median, roughly, the median, roughly, the average per se is more than 50%. Pan India, 39% in the state of West Bengal. There are various questions that beg to be answered as we narrate you the story. Why did the scam go on for so long? why did it take the authorities so long to notice this more importantly this is public money which was embezzled by the local level officers and the nexus and the rot ran deep joining us on the broadcast is mr ratan sharda who's an rss thinker and author ahmed ayaz mr ahmed ayaz who's a political analyst mr amitabh sena who's a senior lawyer and saira shah halim who's an activist with us on the broadcast amitabh ji coming to you first when you notice the details of the case that have emerged so far how deep the rot seems to you mr amitabh sena i hope you can hear me sir am i audible to you uh, i think the some problem in we'll we'll just try and fix that problem sir my team will just get in touch with you and we'll fix that problem i'll request mr ratan sharda to open the debate for us sir as we see these numbers emerging and the scam has gone on for about a decade now because in 2016 it was only on earth when that digitization uh, process was started that's when the authorities got to know that something is absolutely wrong here and the funds are not reaching the beneficiaries that they are intended to reach mr ratan shada your preliminary comments on the details that have emerged so far so let me share a few facts which i had archived some years back sure there is a times of Report of 17th August, which says in Uttarakhand the scholarship scheme for BPL from class one to tenth, 88 percent people didn't re, uh, re enroll again because of the digitization because direct benefit transfer was happening happening directly to the students. Hmm. Earlier the money was going to the schools or the madrasa at that time. Yeah. Again there is a report of Hindustan Times 15 September 2017, 27 lakh ration cards were found to be bogus hmm. and new ration cards were issued afresh to 33 lakh deserving people. then he had a midday meal scheme uh, scandal in chark manipur andhra pradesh where 44 lakh ghost students were found when digitization was done 
Yeah. Then we had the case of uh, number of hostels. If you the way you see now, ninety percent to sixty percent fraud institutions. What are the officials doing? What are the governments doing? Hmm. Because when the government tries to weed out such institutions, there are people who start crying about secularism, about intolerance, about you know victimization. So can we understand the difference between victimization and the genuine fraudulent way the people are being the, the tax money being looted by people who have who basically are there with hmm. fake institutions? Why can't we have honesty in at least weeding out such elements? It is not a question of his madras or school. It is basically how. the people are just extracting exploiting and making money hmm. in a big fraud so this but, has to be caught but, it has taken so many Mr. years Mr Mr Ahmed Ayaz uh, we were debating the story at 6 pm also today and we had certain islamic scholars <laughs> and people from the community who know about how madrasas are run because about 70 to 80% of the minority funds especially pertaining to education are sought by by the muslim community to various madrasas to various students who rightfully deserve this help from the government unfortunately it's not reaching the right hands it seems to be a common knowledge that these funds are misused do you think that the government should have stepped in earlier and more importantly if there is a general overall um knowledge about these misappropriation of fund really happening do you think something could have been done at the community level no because uh, at community level possibly this would not have uh, nothing could could have been done because it must must not have been known to the community hmm. it must have been between the institution and the government hmm. you see uh, any institution education institution cannot operate unless it is properly registered and the and the and the me and why it is being registered to see that hmm. it is monitored by the government by the agencies authorities properly and uh, here if it is a question of you know siphoning of uh, around 140 crores hmm. uh, by the in, by uh, these institutions by these madrasas hmm. and it is not just you know it has happened over the night it is happening sure. for last so many years yes and uh, then also then also it is almost pan india hmm. it is not in one area one state one institution so my point is that why the government has been what the government has been doing what the authorities have been doing hmm. if this such a large scale you know siphoning of funds has been happening okay. uh, what the government has been doing sir, wh- sir, uh, don't a, you think that uh, this no, 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 must very, have been in no, league no, with this is a very valid question and in fact in my opening comments i said that why did it take so long for the government to unearth the scam that is also exactly what mr ratan sharda was arguing let's come to the second limb of the argument the second limb of the argument is for example there was an audit process of madrasas and this pertain to educational curriculum uh, that was started in certain states including uttar pradesh and whenever there's an audit of any kind of quote and quote religious minority institutions including the madrasas there is a huge hue and cry and people argue this as some sort of attack on the minority rights in this country how far do you think that narrative is responsible that we have no. not asked the right question no. so far <clears throat> as long as as long as it is a fraud or a scam it cannot be called to be an attack on minorities i'm glad you there is something that. really yes. what is being cla- ah if, why, if it is uh, really uh what is being uh, you know claimed hmm. so then we cannot call it an attack hmm. because you see nobody can authorize nobody can approve nobody can uh, you know uh, uh favor any sort of fraud of funds any siphoning of funds or any it's, it's almost a crime in a way if at all we uh, I, we we call it hmm. but the point is my again the point is that if this was happening if it is not done in in league with the ad- agencies with the administration hmm. why uh, it could not be checked one second second i also doubt i also doubt why has it come today because the timings are now very important why it is if it has been continuing for last so many years hmm. why it is happening now when the elections are around the corner hmm. I, i see that also a possibility that possibly it is linked to that also what, uh, if what, it is what not relation, so then why what, it could not be relation, done 2 years back no no what relation does it have with elections sir i'm curious Yeah, yeah i will explain you know explain what happens these, you know yeah. here the elections are mostly based on you know this uh, uh, communal uh, uh, are being done on communal lines so uh, it gives the feeling that no the minority uh, the, the muslims are now being checked properly 
it gives a reason for others to see that so you can't make both the arguments you made a wonderful argument when you argued that if it's a fraud it doesn't matter which community or which class really it is there must be an investigation and suddenly you start saying that it shows there are some political ambitions to this no, i mean yeah, it's no uh, yes, i believe in that it's an oxymoron it's an oxymoron no, yeah. in the administration ha huh. No, here I am blaming the administration. Why they have chosen this time only? They could have done it earlier. There also is, I the believe, in my understanding, right there, for there is no years. answer to the question of timing. It's only a speculative matter, Mr. Amitabh Sena. Uh, do you do you agree that yeah. what what Mr. Ahmed Ayaz is arguing that uh, the timing is questionable? Or I believe it's a it's a secondary argument to saying that look, we are being targeted in some manner. if there is a fraud which is happening which pertains to students from the minority community these are government funds tax payers money which is supposed to go to the underprivileged children in our country uh, from the minority community then it should anger us all that the children who are supposed to get money are not getting that money and it's being siphoned off thank you uh, mr ayaz were uh, started the issue with a dip, uh, one note and then uh, you know finished his argument with a different note hmm. and it is as usual i mean nothing surprising hmm. but uh, let me uh, put my point very clear hmm. if this uh, uh, entire scam or corruption what uh, anand and you both you were discussing i mean the, i should try to get the reach at the genesis of this problem so this corruption is basically because of the corruption uh, uh, of, of of the entire concept In, in the constitution itself you know in the constitution article 14 talks about the right of equality and article 30 you know you know completely uh, you know vanishes that right to equality and gives special rights to minority institutions and all hmm. see in, in this is the iceberg uh, tip of the iceberg i am telling you hmm. this corruption because of the corrupt uh, approach towards dealing this this entire concept because of the vote party Mr. Ayaz, in the last portion of your statement, very correctly said that this is politics. Yes, I agree. This is politics. Hmm. Why this arrangement has been done? Hmm. Only because to who the Muslim voters they generally vote in, in chunk, and no government, no political party wanted to you know raise fingers on that because no, you know, Mr. we have Mr. just Mr. a minute, Sinha. just a minute. We have seen so many instances like CAA and NRC. Oh. They just go buzzer and start you know. Uh, no, but, but Mr. Uh, Sinha, Mr. Sinha, staying staying focused on the issue here and the embezzlement of funds that has happened, I Because don't understand. The... I don't understand if there can be an argument that it benefits the community in some way. How can it benefit any community if the money that is supposed to go to your madrasas or minority-run educational institutions, it's not going to the madrasas or the children? Then it's clearly embezzled, and one wonders for what purpose it has been stolen off. See, see, the concept is faulty. That is a problem. And uh, the people who who are using or misusing this provision, obviously they they are uh, you know. using this in in their own benefits and mm. the actual needy people will not uh, get it because this this entire concept is not honest why any religious minority or should be considered as a valid uh, you know point when when the uh, this constitution ensures secularism when well, secularism is there well sir when that's secularism. a larger debate and we must have that in that country someday i'm not denying no, the existence no, but, but of that but this debate. corruption this yes. corruption is only because of that corrupt mindset that why muslims should be given this type of and see if the corrupt genesis is corrupt then the entire corruption will uh, start uh, running from the uh, this point well, only sir, as I long as said, there is a provision in the indian constitution and muslim are recognized it must be repealed it that's must a, be repealed that's a legal debate of repealment that needs to happen but saira shalim does it enrage you that the funds that are supposed to go to the madrasas to the underprivileged children of our country they are being embezzled in this manner I feel that every scam should be probed and accountability taken. Let's not forget what is happening right now is the CAG findings. There has been a cost escalation of public projects and complete waste of public money. How about investigating? The, let's look at the Bharat Mala project. National highways. The cost has been escalated. The tendering process was flawed, and safety measures were not taken into account. 
let's look, look at the Dwarka Expressway, the Jenny Gurgaon border, oh, the construction. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm waiting. I'm just being. I'm, I'm just let being me, modest, let and let I'm allowing finish, her to finish, finish her argument. Let finish, finish, finish her argument. From wow. rupees eighteen crore, let me finish. From rupees eighteen crore per kilometer to rupees two fifty kilometer. One at a time. One at a time. One at a time. One at a time. No, no. One at a time. Let me finish. Let her finish. We'll come back. Yeah. Actually, when you were speaking, let me talk. Yeah, finish. So it escalated from rupees eighteen crore per kilometer but to Saira, rupees two hundred uh, crore have, per kilometer. I have positive time, and that's why I'm interrupting you. Whatever you have said, if there are grounds to investigate it, it should be investigated. You cannot have vote about re on corruption cases, right? This is the money that belongs to the minority community and its children, I, and the I fact that there is a scam, and the fact that there is a scam that has emerged. I believe you all should be on the same page that at the present Absolutely. moment the beneficiaries who are getting this money it should be stalled there should be a proper audit that I should be done and once again we should ensure that there is an efficient system that is put in place Absolutely agree with you if you see my opening line I said all scams have have to be probed and no, investigated I, we cannot cherry the, pick we cannot cherry the generic pick nature of your arg argument is evasive it is a evasive. season of scam the, it is a season the of generic scams nature of your argument is highly evasive there lies the problem what what about the cat findings let it, it is the biggest scam and right now the pmo is is being questioned because according to the cag report which very clearly they are, they are, they are they are being attempts to uh, nuzzle uh, their findings Uh, it it has been tabled uh, you know in, in the parliament uh, in the first week of august that the the 29 km km expressway is being constructed no, but, but i don't get it i don't get it i don't get this argument saira come on you're a woman i i don't think i don't think, I don't think that's express, why are we so scared of talking about certain issues if there are minority run yes, institutions that is the problem where where, where there is embezzlement of funds which is happening we should I, talk I, about I, it I, and I, we should I ensure that the minority run institutions institutions get the money that they deserve that's what the entire debate is about and, and I'm, even I'm in the beginning mr mr ratan sharda and me included we argued this fact that the government should have acted upon it much earlier we are only getting uh, to know about it right now and and that's unfortunate <coughs> but we hope that the cbi looks into the matter and you know, anybody who's responsible is booked i i i'm sorry i'm short of time that's all the time that i have ratan sharda mr ahmed ayaz mr amitab sinha and sairo shahleem thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast there's some breaking news coming in nine soldiers are dead after a vehicle falls in gorjin khari near le 10 soldiers were there in that truck when that incident took place very unfortunate bit of news coming in that 10 soldiers have lost uh, nine soldiers i apologize have lost their life in this incident that has happened 10 soldiers were there in that truck and the confirmation right now is of nine soldiers akash with us on the broadcast akash break down the story uh so uh, this is an unfortunate news uh, that is coming from leh and we are learning that uh, we have lost nine of our jawan this was an accident where an army truck that was a part of a convoy uh you know of fell into a gorge and we are learning that a total 10 uh, you know soldiers were there total Ten Jawans were there on board, and nine of them are dead as of now. In fact, uh, one is critically injured and has been shifted to a nearby hospital. Uh, we don't know as to what went wrong in this particular case. It happened in evening, but yes, uh, this is a difficult terrain, and the place where this accident has happened is actually a place near to Kiari village of Leh area, Leh district, and we are learning about uh, these nine. fatal casualties and the uh, jawan who is critically injured has been shifted to a nearby hospital and we are also learning that he is critically injured uh inquiry will let us know as to uh, what actually went wrong in this particular case but we are learning that this army truck was a part of a convoy where we have multiple vehicles in fact uh, uh, you know these uh, these uh, vehicles and these jawans were of uh, 14 core of indian army and uh, it has happened in evening we are learning at around a uh, 6 pm it has happened to when the officers got to know about the accident they, and they rushed to the uh, particular site and then we got to know that Absolutely. Uh, you know eight eight Akash, Jawan Akash as you region. get us all the details let's also bring in our colleague Tejinder into the discussion Tejinder what details you have 
ਆਲਸੋ reach the spot uh, the injured people they were injured army personnel they were shifted to the hospital initially one army jawan he uh, come to his injuries at the spot and eight others later come to uh, their injuries in the military hospital so right now na- unfortunately nine army jawans have been uh, killed in the line of duty in this uh, accident whereas one uh, remains critical so uh, the police says that there were 10 army personnel on board this vehicle so nine have lost their life while one is still battling for his uh, survival in the army hospital so a uh, sad sad day for the army wherein uh, nine of its brave hearts have laid down their life in the line of duty yes thoughts and prayers with the with the family of the soldiers who have lost their life in this very unfortunate accident my colleague uh, akash and tejinder getting us all the details one soldier is critically injured we'll continue tracking the story much more here on cnn news 18 it's a wrap on the situation thank you for watching